Hey everyone, welcome back. This is going to be the second part of polynomial division. In this video, we'll basically just be talking about a few more examples and one special case in particular. Our first example will be to compute the polynomial 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by the polynomial x minus 1. As always, the first step is to write the polynomial we are dividing into on the inside of the division bar and the polynomial we are dividing by, aka the divisor, on the outside. The leading term of our polynomial is 3x squared, so it's our first target. Remember that we call it a target because the goal is to multiply the divisor by a mystery term that we will come up with so that the target term, 3x squared, appears. The divisor is x minus 1, so what do we multiply this by to get a 3x squared? Well, an x term is already showing up on its own, so we need a 3 and another copy of x. So let's try multiplying the whole thing by 3x. This multiplication gives us 3x squared minus 3, which is good because our target appears. Therefore, the term 3x that we came up with will appear in our quotient, and we'll place it on the top of the division bar. Next, we have to take the product we got and subtract it from the polynomial we're dividing into. This subtraction, when we're done, gives us 5x squared plus 1. Since our target term, 3x squared, came up in this product, they cancel each other out in this subtraction, which leaves us with a 5x, and then we just drop down the 1 like we would in regular long division with numbers. This gives us our new target term, 5x. So we're going to play the same game and multiply our divisor, x minus 1, by something so that a 5x appears. Notice that multiplication of 5 gives us a product of 5x minus 5. Our target shows up, so we're going to add 5 to the quotient above, and then we are going to subtract the product from 5x plus 1. Doing so gives us an answer of 6. There are no more terms to drop down, so this tells us that we are done with the long division. The only step that remains is to compile our results. So, 3x plus 5 is our quotient, and 6 at the bottom is our remainder. Therefore, we're going to get a final answer of 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 is equal to 3x plus 5 plus 6 divided by x plus 1. Let's do another example just like this. Compute x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 5. Place everything around the division bar properly, and then get a first target of x squared, since that is the leading term of the polynomial that we are dividing into. Notice that multiplying x minus 5 with x gives us a product of x squared minus 5, therefore our target shows up, so we can place an x in the quotient spot, and subtract the product x squared minus 5 from the polynomial we're dividing into. We get an answer of 2x, and then we drop down the 2. This gives us a new target of 2x, therefore we're going to multiply x minus 5 by something to give us a 2x. Multiplying by 2 gives us a product of 2x minus 10, therefore our 2x shows up, so we can place the 2 in the quotient, and we can subtract the product 2x minus 10 from the polynomial 2x plus 2, and get an answer of 12. There are no more terms to drop down, so we're done. Therefore, our quotient is x plus 2, and our remainder is 12. Therefore, we get a final answer of x plus 2 plus 12 divided by x minus 5. And I've got one more example for you today. This one is a little bit unique. We're going to compute x squared plus 1 divided by x plus 1. Up until now, every time we've divided into a polynomial, that polynomial has had exponents that go down by 1 every single time. For instance, in the previous example, we had an x squared term, we had an x to the 1 term, and we had a constant term. In this problem, we have an x squared term and a constant term, but we don't have x raised to the first power, which poses a problem for us. But that's okay because we have a way of fixing this. It should be clear that if I take a polynomial and add 0 to it, then I get the polynomial I started with in return. In other words, adding 0 does nothing. It's a pretty common trick to take the number 0 and write it in a special way that is going to work for us. The way that we are going to write 0 here is 0 times x. Clearly 0 times x is equal to 0, so normally we wouldn't write this in the polynomial. However, adding it into the polynomial doesn't change the value of the polynomial in any way, and it gives us the advantage of having every power of x present. We have an x squared, we now have an x to the 1 showing up, and we've got a constant term. 
This is exactly what we want. 0x is called a placeholder. Basically, any time that we have a missing power of x, we write that power of x and attach a 0 to it. Once we've done this, we can start dividing. So let's go ahead and set up our division bar. We have a polynomial inside with the placeholder and our divisor outside. Just like we've been doing, x squared, which is the leading term of the polynomial we're dividing into, is our first target. Multiply x plus 1 by x to get x squared plus x, which will put an x in the top and have us subtract the product x squared plus x from the polynomial, which gives us an answer of minus x plus 1 once we drop down the 1. Our second target is minus x. Therefore, multiply x plus 1 by negative 1 to get minus x minus 1, which puts a minus 1 in the quotient, and once we subtract this product, there are no more terms to drop down, therefore we have a final answer of x minus 1 plus 2x divided by x plus 1.